my life is shaped by a lot of events, but one of the most powerful was somebody doing these kind acts for my family. When I was 11 years old, we had a really, really tough Thanksgiving where there was no money and no food, and we wouldn't have starved. We always found a way to get something, but we weren't going to have a Thanksgiving dinner, that's for sure, certainly not a feast of any sort. And now, uh, my mom and dad at the time uh, were fighting like cats and dogs, and saying things that once you say them, you can never take them back. You know, the kind of stuff I'm talking about. And my mom was screaming at father about how he couldn't even take care of his own family. And it was horrible. And I have a younger brother and younger sister. I'm the oldest. So I was trying to keep them from hearing this conversation. And then a miracle happened. Bang on the door. I'm the oldest. They're screaming. So I go answer the door. And I answer the door. And standing there is this giant man. I was this little boy. And he's holding this huge box of food. And beside him on the ground was a black pot with an uncooked turkey in it. And he said, is your father home? And I said, just one moment. <laughs> I was like, unbelievably euphoric. I thought, this is a gift from God. This is going to change it all. This can make my mom and dad happy. It's going to be unbelievable. So I go, my father is screaming at my mother through a closed door to the bedroom door. And I said, dad, dad, there's a guy at the door. And he goes, go, you answer the door. I said, I did. He's got to see you. So I, I kind of teased. I said, dad, you got to come. So he said, fine. He made one last yell at her and he walks to the door and I'm waiting there, just can't wait to see his face. And my dad opens the door and this man's standing there with this big box of food and my father did not get happy. He looked at this man and he raised his voice to him and he said, look, we don't take charity. And then he took the door to slam it in the man's face, but the man was a good sized man. He put his foot there and smacked his foot and bounced back over. He said, sir, sir. This is not charity. Everybody has tough times. Somebody knows you're having a tough time. And they want you to have a magical Thanksgiving. I'm just the delivery guy. He said, please take this. And my father said, we don't take charity. He went to slam it again. And this time the guy put his shoulder against it so he couldn't do it. And then my father's staring at him. It's like these two males starting to get in this intense mode. And one's just trying to give a gift and I'm freaking. And then the guy said something that I'll never forget. And in the moments I wish he hadn't said but he found a way to force my father. He's holding this thing and he looked at me and then he looked at my dad and he said, don't make your family suffer because of your ego. Now my dad's level of energy increased, but he was also trapped. You get it? So he took the food, slammed it on our table and slammed the door in the man's face and everyone thanked him. And I, I didn't know what to do. Part of me wanted to cry, part of me was crushed and I watched my father storm off and went on back to scream at my mother and I remember that day just thinking you know I don't understand and years and years later I began to understand it a little bit what I began to understand is that you look at a person's life and it's like so much in life you can be joyous about like I wanted to smile you know what I mean even now I can remember it I wanted to smile about this great gift but now I couldn't even smile because it would make him angry and then I thought, you know, years I figured out, our whole life is shaped by decision. But there's three decisions you're making every moment you're alive. And the way you make these three decisions shapes your destiny. First decision we're all making every moment is what are you going to focus on? What are you going to focus on? And, you know, I realized that my father's life and my life ended up very different because we made that day three decisions very differently. He decided to focus on the fact that he has not fed his family. And the second question you got to decide, every moment you're alive, including this moment, what are you going to focus on? The second question is, as you're focusing on, what does this mean? What does it mean? And the bottom line on meaning is, if you think about it, you get to make up the meaning, and most people pick the worst one, don't they? That day, my father decided to focus on the fact he hadn't fed his family, and I know what meaning he gave, because he said it out loud over and over again, that he was worthless because he had not taken care of his family. And then the final, most important decision you make every moment you're alive, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I'll tell you what he decided to do. He decided to leave our family shortly thereafter, which at the time was, it was the worst experience of my life. It was the most crushing experience I felt. It's been so many years now. I don't have the same feelings. Part of it is three years ago, he passed away. 
But at the time, I knew no greater pain. My family knew no greater pain. I couldn't understand why I would leave. I loved him so much. And my life turned out very different than him. I was the only one to go to his funeral. No one else in the family would go. Nobody wanted to be part of it. He died alone of a disease called connective tissue disorder. And I can tell you right before his death, he got the lesson because he looked at me and he said, son, he said, I was a bastard. I didn't connect with anybody and look what I'm dying of. It's unbelievable. So that same day, I made three different decisions. I decided to focus on the fact there was food. What a concept. I like that. But what changed my life was the meaning I gave it. I decided that day that what this means is that strangers care. And if strangers care about me and my family, I decided what I was going to do is I was going to care about strangers. And that completely changed my life. I promised myself someday I'd do well enough to do this for other families like it was done for me. And I didn't wait till I was you know, wealthy to do it. I did my first one when I was 17. I remember when I was 17, I had my own car, I had some money, and I decided to go on the greatest shopping spree of my life at that point. I said I was going to go shop for two families for Thanksgiving and I was going to go do for families that was done for me so many years before. It was the most euphoric experience. I took two baskets, I went to the manager of the place, I told him what I was going to do and I said, I want you to give me a discount, you be my partner, give me 10% cheap bastard. <laughs> right? But it was so cool, I got two of everything, right? Because I wanted to get enough food for a family for two or three days and have an unbelievable feast. Then I called this church in the barrio area and I said, listen, I want to go take care of some families that are too proud to come to the church and get food. So they might suffer. Can you recommend some families? And they gave me two families. So then I wrote a note because I thought, you know what? I'm going to put on old jeans and a t-shirt. I'm going to deliver this. I'm not going to get the acknowledgement, but I do want to see their faces, right? So all goes the delivery boy, which is easy. I look like one. And, but I wrote this note and I wrote, I, I don't want him to get upset like my father did. So I wrote this note and I said, this is a gift from a friend. Please know that you're loved. I want you to have an extraordinary Thanksgiving. You deserve it. Please accept this gift. And then I put under it, I said, if you can someday do well enough to do this for one other family and pass on the gift. And I put love a friend. And then I realized I was going to an area that was more Latino and I don't speak Spanish. So I thought oh, I got a friend to write on the back in Spanish so I could flip it around if there was a challenge. So I got one of my buddy's old vans I need a little room, put all the groceries in. And I drove to this house. And it was not what I expected, it was more. I got to this house and I got two bags of groceries and I banged on the door. Door opened and this woman about this tall right, stares up at me like this, right? And I said, hi. And it was very obvious she didn't speak any English and she was let out a scream when she saw the food. And by the way, this woman had five children and a husband. What I didn't know is the husband had left her three days before with no money, no food, and five kids. So I got these bags. So she screamed and she grabbed me and started pulling my neck and like kissing me, right? And I said, no, 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 no. I said, I'm the delivery boy, delivery boy. And I was, she didn't understand a word I was saying. So I reached in the pocket and I gave her the note, flipped it over. She read it in Spanish. And then she started to bawl. So then she came and started kissing me again. I said, no, no, I'm the delivery boy. I'm, you know. You know, I'm trying to show her. And she goes, no, no, gift from God, gift from God. So and I'm trying not to bawl. So I'm like, you know, where do I put this? And I'm doing everything. I hold it together, like smiling, but I want to cry. And she just pointed. It wasn't a big house. It's like a room. So I went over and I put the stuff on there. And just as I'm trying to put stuff on there, I hear these screams. And all of a sudden, bam, bam, two boys hit me, one leg, then the other. These two little guys just tackle me, right? When they, saw, when they saw the food, they went crazy. When I saw the pumpkin pie, it was over. <laughs> so I said, come out with me, come out with me. And so they came out and we kept bringing these groceries in. And I'm telling you, it was like, I don't know how to describe it. It was the most euphoric, fun, passionate, loving. It was like they're my little brothers, you know? And so we brought all the stuff in and they were laughing and they were lit up. And then, you know, I'd done it all and it was time to go and I didn't want to go and they didn't want me to go. This one little boy just wouldn't let go of my leg and he just kept looking up to me and hugging me and I was like, you know, but I had to go make the other delivery. So, um, I told this woman, I said, you know, I, I've got to go, you know, and she said, uh, okay, whatever her language was, I didn't know what it was, but I knew it meant okay, right? So, I went to go leave and then she grabbed my arm and she started to have tears in her eyes and I... And I said, uh, I wanted to say, you know, Happy Thanksgiving, but I didn't know Spanish, so I went, Feliz Navidad. 
dude, it was close. <laughs> you know? And she started laughing. She went from crying to laughing, right? And she grabbed him, gave me this big hug, and the kids gave me these hugs. And I remember I got out and I walked off, and they were all standing on the porch. And I got in this little van and I drove it out and I turned it around. And as I went to turn around, I looked in the rearview mirror. And I was feeling all this emotion building in my body. And I looked in the mirror and I saw Mama standing on the porch with her kids. All the kids smiling. Mama's sitting there crying hysterically and smiling from ear to ear. And I couldn't keep it together. I just, I was right there, stopped in the street, and I started bawling uncontrollably. And I remember just thinking, you know, this is a beautiful thing, you know, why is this making me cry? And, you know, why is this, this great thing? Why am I so emotional about this? And then I got it. I realized in that moment that the worst day of my life, my father leaving, had actually been the best day of my life. Because if I hadn't had that experience, I wouldn't be here today. And now because of that, I'm get to live this life. I have the desire and the drive and the, the want to give in this way. And so I've really realized that the worst day was the best day, that that was God's gift. The gift wouldn't have been there if he would have stayed. There's an old country song that says, thank God for unanswered prayers. It's a story about this man who wants his prayer and finds out later on it wasn't fulfilled, right? So I tell you, I tell you the story for a couple reasons. One is, if you want to change your life, figure out how your worst day was your best day. You'll change everything. Because it is if you look for it. If you find the deeper meaning it is. You know, there's something in you that wouldn't be there without it. And the second reason is, because I want to recruit your soul not for your money or business. I want to recruit you in this action of going and making a difference. I want to recruit you for you because I know if you go do a few of these things, you'll get hooked and you'll make it a ritual and it'll change your life. You know, whatever things you do in your life, this is what it's really about. And you know, it won't be long before it'll be Thanksgiving here and we still do this. You know, I start out the first year, I've had two families and the next year I've had four and I'm gonna double it. Next year I did eight, which was a lot of work. And I didn't tell anybody what I was doing because I wasn't doing it for acknowledgement. I was doing it because it was right. But after a while, I thought I could use some help. So I got my friends together and said, you know what? Instead of just going to have in Turkey, let's give thanks. Let's go build baskets with food and great stuff. And let's deliver it to people. Then we'll come in and have a big dinner. And we'll talk about what we're grateful for and have our dinner. And so we did it. And it became a ritual and it grew. And then I built some companies and all my employees got involved. And then about 14, 15 years ago, I started my foundation. Last year, we fed over a million people now in nine countries around the world. You know, on Christmas and Thanksgiving, you know, pretty amazing experience, right? I, was, I wasn't telling you for that reason I want to recruit you. And you can give your money, but I'd much prefer if you would just go deliver the food. Because I'll tell you what's great. You'll be changed by that. It's easy to give money. But when you enter an environment, you, give, you don't give as the giver. You go as the delivery person, but you're really the one that made it. It'll absolutely change your life.